Hello, my name's uh, Mike Curry, and I'm going to be doing a uh, small driving tour of Weymouth, Nova Scotia. We're going to start at one end of town, which is where the Food Land, one of the uh, two grocery stores that are here that are still surviving, even though about 20 minutes away there's much larger Superstore and Sobeys and, and Walmart. So it'll remain to seen how long they stay in in business here which hopefully it'll be for a long long time but I just wanted to point out that not all change is bad in uh, small towns and some of the things are changing some of the clientele are changing um, we notice in the in the rental market um, there's people coming from different parts of the country that are coming here to enjoy the, the small town lifestyle and uh, so it's not always the death of a small town, the out-migration from small towns in Nova Scotia in particular and in other parts of the country and that I'm sure has been going for a long time. In Nova Scotia the first report was done in 1938. So that gives an idea how long this this story has been going on. And I just pulled into where the, the Value Foods is which would be the competitor to Foodland and they're here on the main drag just on one side of town as we drive on through and some of the things when i first started coming here in 2000 there were uh, there was another car dealership in town there was a bar there's uh, some different you know there's some different businesses now some of these businesses have have moved on but other businesses have come in to take their place so it's not always necessary the business are gone and everything's shut down and uh, and so it's not always a terrible thing so where the car dealership was they built this brand new strip mall so it's a little strip mall um, Sisabu place you can see and they also have an appliance showroom for the home hardware which is across the street which has been taken up pretty much all the buildings and, and spots along here including they have taken over the old kind of service department area for the um, hardware store uh, for the car dealership and they still are running the Irving pumps there and you can see their facility is quite large so they've taken up a lot of a lot of space in town which has been really really great so that's been a, a positive change. They've been able to expand out. You can see the Pharmasave across the way. It's an interesting, you know, newer, newish building. It's built within the last 20 years. And as we take a drive down here, there used to be a little Weymouth Diner in here, which is now gone. But uh, as one restaurant closes, oftentimes other ones either get busier or another one will eventually take its place. This pizza shop back here, they actually moved it from the front portion of the street to the back, which is kind of interesting. And as you can see on the back of the upper unit there, they put a new new deck. Across the street here, you can see the Weymouth Mercantile. And so when you think about changes in small towns, um, this was a, a building here, which I noticed they have a little hairdresser shop on the side, but actually this building used to be a uh, bowling alley many years ago so you know things uh, things have been changing around here for a long time um, the uh, credit union is right here a small credit union shop which is the only there's two banks in town there's the Royal Bank and then the uh, credit union but another big positive change was they built this Sisabu landing and brand new library so there's been some great places you know built around here to, to you know talk about the history of this uh, town and all the things that have gone on here over time because it was at one time as many small towns were a uh, bustling community so when something comes in when there's major industry that shows up on the scene and uh, in the case down here of shipbuilding um, where it enhances the, the lumber industry and everything's booming it's actually pretty amazing that a lot of these small towns survive and live on afterwards so we should be proud of that fact and realize that hey you know what the, there has been changes but it's not all bad changes it's like a little building in here and then here used to be a gas station now it's just grass so 
I'm not sure what will happen to it eventually. But there was a little building up here that used to be sort of a little hardware store, but somebody has turned it into a, uh, a plastic welding shop, which is good industry to be in here because of the fisheries and, and uh, mink and all that sort of stuff. And up here on the side, which we're gonna turn around and take a look at, is the Goodwin Motel, which has been running here since 1890. So they've been servicing guests here since 1890. And uh, so they are your proverbial sort of small town, family run business, you know, they raised, raised their kids and everything in this in this old house here and, and looked after uh, after guests and stuff for many, many, many years. As you can see right now, there's some bikers getting on the, uh, getting ready to go for the day. So there's a good look at it. They have a restaurant and all that sort of stuff there. And as we cruise out of here, we have the, what I call the bank building. And this building is interesting because a couple of years ago, somebody came and they spent a lot of money renovating. As you can see, all the brickwork's all repointed. Um, and then, after that, nothing. So it just it was built, renovated, and then nothing. So I don't know if they're ever coming back or what's going to happen with it. Um, hopefully, it won't fall into disrepair again. But you never know. And as we drive in through here. Um, this is where Sisabu Farm Supplies are. They got a nice facility in here, and they seem to be a going concern. I don't see them going anywhere um, due to the uh, the agriculture business, and in particular, we have uh, a lot of mink business here. We got fisheries. We have a lot of a lot. Of, there's actually quite a lot going on in this community, and I I find a lot of people I talk to don't realize how much is going on and how important some of these businesses are in in the rural communities in Nova Scotia in particular and they don't realize how much an impact it has on their um, on their daily life because they just think you know I mean people tend to live in their own sort of sort of bubbles so here's the back side of what I call body works and they've been able to take an old building that when I first started coming here, it used to be actually a restaurant. So the interesting thing is that there's a restaurant on top and then they have sort of a uh, commercial uh, units on the bottom here, which is where we just saw that sign for, for a Weymouth Job Search Center um, and that type of thing. And uh, we, uh, as many small communities face challenges like jobs, that sort of thing, because Many people think of the small, um, not that they think small, but they don't think global necessarily, and they're looking for uh, somebody to give them a job rather than create a job, and that's where the entrepreneurship piece comes into, uh, into play, which is not really focused on in school, so I, you know, I, I don't wanna say, say too much on that, but uh, you know, just from a quick opinion, it's just they don't teach entrepreneurship. They teach a, a model of trying to create factory workers, and uh, which worked for many, many years in the industrial era, where they were trying to create good factory employees. So that was that was good. That model worked for a long time, but it, it doesn't anymore, as we know. So that's the old restaurant that was once we were there. The other seems to be like the hottest growing uh, rental type in uh, in all our, well, it's all over rural Nova Scotia for sure, and it could be in other parts of the country, is the small rentals. Because there's a lot of older people that have a little bit of money and, and they don't want to live necessarily in um, uh, their big old houses, that type of thing. So they want to sell their house and move to nice rental accommodation. Well, those choices can be limited in uh, rural areas. So what's been popping up is these little duplexes. They're like super efficient and really nice. They have a little garage, a couple bedrooms. So they're really, really nice, efficient little homes. And their primary target market is sort of the uh, the baby boomers or the, um, 
you know, the retirees that want to live in, in nice homes. And they are creeping up. I can't tell you how many I see the see of those being built around this uh, around this area here for sure. I'm just gonna drive, gonna speed up my tour a little bit because I just want to get up the road here a little bit more, so I can get a little more of a tour of Weymouth. Uh, part of what I wanted to do this is I've noticed so many changes over the years, so I wanted to point out uh, some things. For example, the real estate market. You can't really see it that well because of all the trees, but there's a house directly across that was for sale, gorgeous Victorian home for $60,000. So you can get old homes that are beautiful if you're into that sort of thing for very, very inexpensive prices. So it's a very attractive place for people to uh, come and move to if they, if they really like the older homes and the more simpler life. I just went through the Nova Scotia Liquor Commission. Um, most of our liquor here is regulated in Nova Scotia, so you tend to um, uh, not uh, see, well, that, that store will basically never go out of business. <laughs> because it's, it's sanctioned by the government and that's where they have the, sort of the monopoly. There is some wine stores creeping up. Just the second bank here, the Royal Bank. They've been doing business here for many, many years. It's a, uh, as you can see by that old brick bank building that was downtown, sort of replaced by this little, small little wood structure building, which is not typically what you think of for a bank, but in this case, it serves the purpose. And I just want to drive up around here. And as you can see, if you, like I said, if you're into Victorian architecture, so if you can find a way to make a good living in a small community, which the internet has opened up a lot of doors in that way. I'm gonna conclude around here by just turning into this school here, which is the Weymouth Consolidated School, which when my wife came here, uh, it went right through to grade 12. And now it's a primary to grade six school. So, if we start from here, I just wanted to take you down through town and conclude our tour with just sort of like a little drive through the countryside so you can get an object because I know I was turning in and out of a lot of places. So this kind of gives you more of a <clears throat> feel of what Weymouth, Nova Scotia looks like if, as we do a small driving tour through town coming from the school side of it. So I think, you know, and I want to document this because there are a lot of changes in many, many small towns and rural communities everywhere. And I wanted to, uh, you know, get that on, on film because I'm very interested to see how things change and I'm, I'm trying to look at a more positive lens and say, okay, what are the positive changes? What What's changed for the better in some of these small communities that have created opportunity for many people? instead you know and, and has there been a move towards different types of industries like the hardware business might be a good business because a lot of people are recognizing they can purchase these older homes and some of them are used as vacation homes and some of them are full-time residents or part-time residences from people from all over different parts of the country as I said in what well, we've noticed in the in the rental market where you see people coming from different parts that want to experience a small town and some people want to raise their family in a small town so they're they're taking a good serious look at these towns and I think we need to attract those um, those uh, people whether they be from other parts of the country or they are immigrants from different countries um, that's all really really important to uh, look at <clears throat> in these small towns and think about the industries I mean if an industry is dead it's dead you know like move on and, and start to think about different types of things that we can do in these small towns to keep the young people here. And I believe that entrepreneurship, you know, with the advent of the internet has just opened up so many doors that we should really think seriously about, you know, promoting entrepreneurship to young people in these towns rather than promoting go to school, work hard and get a job, the old model that doesn't seem to work. Anyways, that concludes my video. I hope you enjoyed it.